Hi, I'm Gabello and I'm a French non-binary pansexual activist. Hello, my name is Oliver and I'm a trans guy who makes videos about LGBTQIA plus people where they get to talk about anything that they want that somehow relates to them being queer. I'm currently traveling by train through Europe and in Paris, France, I met up with Gab Elo. I actually have two names. Right now it's Gabrielle and Eloise. So one is more male, the other one is more female. I'm going to be 29 in a few days. I identify as non-binary. In English I would use they. In French, sadly, we don't have that. So I use she or he or the most neutral ways of speaking in French, but it's hard. <laughs> and I also identify as pansexual. And I'm an activist for women's rights, LGBTQ plus rights and the planet. Gab Elo has kind of known that they're queer since childhood. I've never felt female since I was like, I think four or five, to be honest. As many people, I was called tomboy by my parents. And actually, when I was a child, I would identify as a boy, like the prince or the knight going for adventure. Or I would identify as a girl dressed as a boy, like Mulan and stuff like this. So classic, <laughs> classic stuff. Then I identified as a feminist. So I was like, I'm not a woman, I'm a feminist. <laughs> for years and years and years. And then I discovered gender <laughs> and I was like, Oh, I can just not be a woman, that's amazing. <laughs> so, but I think I used the word non-binary for me, like maybe in 2019, something like this. Because that's where I started to be really active in activism, in some association and stuff. And so I discovered that there was more to it than feminism. Even though feminist, I love it, but there was more to it. And slowly in the last years, I tried to tell my friends, family, some part of my family. People at work, please don't really use she if possible, please don't use really that name. Or I was in France, many people that are non-binary, we take our names and we only, we cut it. We use the first part. So I would say Elo for Eloise. And most of my friends, we would all have <laughs> beginning of names. And really, really recently I was like, actually I love Gabriel. So maybe I will use that one and play with both but the realization about their sexual orientation came a bit later. I thought I was heterosexual for years because I was getting along more with boys when I was a child. So the tomboy playing with boys, I really thought I was superior to girls as most tomboys do. And then I realized it's not really, <laughs> it's not true. And it's, it's not a good way of, of surviving in this, in this world. And so I was like, I'm, I'm playing with the boy, but I also like the boys because girls are annoying and, and um, lame and whatever. So I had some boyfriends. And then one day, this couple comes at me and I'm like, actually, I don't care at all about the guy. I like the girl much better. Mm, maybe I'm bisexual. <laughs> and it was actually the really beginning of my sexual life. So I, I, I would say I had sex with a man for the first time at 19. And then one year later with a woman. And then I was like, yeah, OK, I'm bisexual for years and years in it, and then bam, gender, 2019. And I was like, maybe it's not just I like feminine men and masculine women. Maybe actually there's more to that. <laughs> and then I realized I just like people. I feel like I'm human and I like human beings. But the only thing I, I would say I don't really like, like many people, is like, it's really hard for me right now to have a relationship with cis heterosexual men like many people, because I also lived through abuse and really, really bad situations. And most of them are not aware of all that, or they are aware and they don't care. So I would say I'm pansexual and I can still be attracted to that, those people, but I don't really do stuff with them most of the time. Gabelo has also kind of been an activist all of their life. Since I was a child again, I was really, really mad at injustice and I was feminist without knowing the world really, really early. And I was like, okay, one day I will change the world. This is so unfair when I'm leaving, because actually I think I'm a, I'm, I'm a feminist and I was at that age because my family is really traditional in some ways. And my father especially was really macho man. It was like, as a girl, you should do the dishes and not your brother. And I was like, I'm not going to do it if my brother doesn't do it. <laughs> and uh, I was like, you will see, I will change the stuff. I will be the first French female president. That was the dream. And I will be also a writer. 
So those were the dreams where I, I was super, super small, actually. I did not become the French first female president, and I don't want to because that's a horrible position, I think. <laughs> but I still did some studies so I could join politics. So I studied law and some political sciences here in Paris. So I, with my job, I worked in the National Assembly of France and I worked in the French Senate. And then outside of job, in my free time, when I finished my studies, I started to go into association and stuff. So I did many actually association. But so, yeah, I was trying to help. I would say mainly in like how to change laws because that's what I'm the most comfortable with. I, I would say I'm not really the one going to glue stuff on the walls, even though I love people who do that. And I think that's very brave and amazing. But I didn't do much stuff in the street. I did mostly the way of how to change the laws, how to change stuff like this. And then I created also my Instagram, where I'm trying to talk about basically a bit of my life, but also writing stuff like, you should never be ashamed of your hair, you should never be ashamed of uh, your period, blood. Uh, you should never be ashamed of your body. This movie is a good example of female gaze, this one is not, stuff like this. That's a mix of all of that, but basically it's, it's everywhere in my life. <laughs> but all of this activism in all areas of their life exhausted Yabelo. But then I did also um, what we call burnout militant, it's like an activist burnout. When you do activism in your job and in your free time and in your private life, it's exhausting. So I did a burnout out of that. And so now I'm, I'm trying to calm down a bit. <laughs> so I do this at my own pace. Yeah, I try to do it bit by bit, but also protecting myself because it takes a lot of energy, especially on social media, I would say. Like they mentioned, they studied law to be able to change some laws. So what exactly are these laws that they want to change? If I had the time and energy, I would try to change everything, <laughs> but it's not possible. The thing is, actually, I realized after I started working in, in the French institution, in the French parliament, basically, we have the two chamber, first one National Assembly and Senate, the second one, so it's the French parliament. Um, actually, many laws already exist for equality, but it's like called equality between men and women, so being non neighbor doesn't exist in France. And uh, even for women's rights, there are already a lot of laws for LGBTQ plus people there are not a lot in that laws actually so I'm still working on this but like the problem is even when you change the law and it exists it's not always applied for me like laws for LGBTQ plus people and women can be somewhat linked somewhat linked sometimes but like for example my field my favorite fields it's like menstrual health and sexual health and so there in the last years for example some changes were made like you can have free menstrual protection but there are like conditions and there's not enough money for it for example so it's a small law like okay for students and women living in the streets and women in prisons we will give some protection but first of all it's not enough for everyone it's not the whole of france for example in scotland it's free for everyone so that would be better <laughs> that would be the aim at some point and the, the protection you will have, it's not healthy. It's the one that are like, you use them and throw them. There are a lot, lot of chemicals inside and stuff. So it's, it's, it's always like that. So you ask something, the perfect stuff you want is here and, and the French government will give you this, maybe. If it matched their political agenda or anything, because that's, that's actually really funny outside of France. Many people think that Emmanuel Macron president is really progressive. I can tell you he's not. <laughs> he doesn't care at all about women and LGBTQ plus people. He did some stuff, but to give us stuff, to say, okay, look at me, I'm a bit progressive. So yes, some stuff happened in, in the last six, seven years, but it's nothing compared to what we should have. But it could be even worse with someone like Marine Le Pen. So it's complicated. Gavilo has actually worked to change the law to make sure that abortion can be performed to week 14 instead of week 12. And they're currently working to make sure that abortion rights are put in the French constitution. But they want to make clear why it's possible for them to work with laws and politics. I, I am able, able to change laws in France because I'm white. Let's be honest. And because my parents pay for my studies. Not everyone can do laws and politics in France. And because even though people think when they see me that I'm a cisgender lesbian, 
so they don't think I'm heterosexual anymore. Even though I look queer in some ways, I still have a lot of privilege thanks to that. Also, I'm thin, I have some money and stuff. And I think that's important to say that because when I worked in politics, many people, we all look the same. We all look white in the National Assembly and Senate, even though France is not white. We are really mixed and we are, and I think that's amazing. Actually, it's linked to our history and many bad parts of it. And we must be aware of that. But today we are mixed and that's amazing, actually. And that's, that's something we should be proud of. And we should have politicians that represent us. Gabelo wants to end the video by sharing their love and passion for sexual education. Me, something that makes me really hopeful about the future. It's really something I love to talk about. It's like, it's, it sounds silly, but like, sexual education is really bad in France. Actually, associations are suing the state right now because they are not respecting their own laws. <laughs> so, but I, I just remember one day I saw a giant clitoris next to the T Eiffel Tower and I saw a giant one in the French metro. And to be honest, that was one of my huge dream in life. This is exactly what kind of thing, that, the, the kind of stuff I, I, I would never believe would happen in, in, in Paris, in France. But when I was 16, I was not even aware I had a clitoris. <laughs> this was so bad. <laughs> oh my God, when I discovered it, I was like, I would love to see people talk about it because it's not in our biological uh, manual education, stuff like this. So you just learn you can be pregnant and that's it. And so when I saw it, it was an advertisement for the series Sex Education. And this was it. And the other one was an association showing it next to the Eiffel Tower to say, we exist. It just made me so happy. So maybe it's small, maybe it's not enough, <laughs> but it, g it gave me really a lot of hope actually. <laughs> I was like, okay, maybe we can change this. And actually, right now, I see many things happening that I dreamt about 10 years ago. So I'm like, okay, it can happen. It's too slow, but it can happen. And I'm so happy that the younger generation will suffer less than me on some stuff. And I'm really, really glad about that. And I hope it will be even better in 10 years. <laughs>